Hello everybody, this is Gregory with The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna to continue this series on Sexy Saturday and talk about Phoebe Dienvor. Now before I begin, please, if you appreciate my content, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so these episodes, especially these videos, come fresh to you. If you're new to the channel, Sexy Saturday is the original name I gave. Uh, the podcast episodes that I would release on Saturday where I would highlight a particular actress that I find attractive. doesn't necessarily mean she has talent, but just somebody I find attractive. So even though this might not be dropped on Saturday, just understand it comes from the podcast because the cinema rag began as a podcast before I moved it over to YouTube. So Phoebe Dienvor is not one of the original 35 that I did on the podcast, which are being moved over here. But I wanted to do a fresh episode on her for, for one reason. The main reason is that she just released a movie called Fair Play on Netflix. But before we get there, I want to talk about why I like Phoebe. Phoebe is actually the daughter of a longtime actress, Sally Danvor, who was on a TV show called Coronation Street for quite some time. By the way, she is English. And she just has that look, man. She has the look. Well, the first time I saw her was on Bridgerton, which we'll talk about that show in a second. But when I saw that trailer drop for Bridgerton, I'm like, I am in. Why? If you're new to this channel, you might not know this, but I have a certain look. And my look is not, you know, big boob porn or the fillers, all that. I like ingenue, 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 sweet, virtuous, innocent waifs. That's my look. So if you think, we have previous episodes here already that we've done here, but, but if you think of someone like Amanda Seyfried, if you think of Emmy Rossum, if you think of Daisy Edgar Jones, um, and the list goes on on Kira Knightley. I like those kind of skinny, wayfish, big eyes, doughy, sweet looking girls. And Phoebe D'Ambra has that. She's got the blue eyes, she's got the red hair, she's got the pale skin, the high, high cheekbones, the tiny, slender figure, and she is beautiful. Now, she, of course, worked her way up in England, but we're only going to talk about two of her, her main works. First is Bridgerton which is a Shonda Rhimes production. It was the first one that Shonda did on Netflix. She, of course, she did Grey's Anatomy and Scandal and all these shows for ABC, and then eventually she signed a big deal uh, to get over to Netflix. And Bridgerton, as of recording this, has, has done its second season. Then they did a kind of prequel of Queen Charlotte, which I didn't find to be that good. But season one of Bridgerton, Phoebe is the protagonist. She plays uh, the Daphne, Daphne Bridgerton. And it, she's the one of eight children of the Bridgerton clan, the father's dead. And essentially the the season is about her debut into Regency England's um, world. So it's like 1815. And it's her kind of, for lack of a better word, debut. It's her debut, like a debutante ball into society to find a, a husband to marry. And eventually she meets Reg St. Paul, who, who blew up on this television show and has gone on to a so far mediocre career uh, post uh, Bridgerton. He did one season and he left. He was on Dungeons and Dragons, for example. We have a, an episode here on, on Dungeons and Dragons. But she was the protagonist. And I just think she just is so lovely, especially when you put her in the period piece uh, dresses and the costumes. I think it really accentuates the ingenue look. And they needed to get somebody that wasn't like overtly sexy, right? They couldn't. Like Daisy Edgar Jones could have done that role as, as Daphne Bridgerton, somebody who's just very fresh faced. It had to be someone that you didn't know because not only is she debuting into Regency society, but she's essentially debuting to you. So they had to get somebody that was not well known. But the show is racy. She does have eventually sex scenes with the Duke, the guy that she ends up marrying. And I think she's quite lovely. And she has a cameo. She appears a little in season two of Bridgerton, which focuses one on, on one of the other Bridgerton siblings finding his love match and every season is going to be one of the eight Bridgerton kids finding a love match but I think Phoebe is off to bigger better things so she might do cameos here and there for Bridgerton but she's off to bigger better things now she just recently did Fair Play this was a Chloe Dumont uh, direction movie she directed it and Fair Play is fascinating I, especially if you come from intersexual dynamics it's fascinating Phoebe plays an American who, who works at a hedge fund with Aldrich Alden, I recommend, I always get his name, the guy who played Solo in the, in the bad Solo movie. Please go to where I rank the Star Wars movie. I have an episode there, and I mentioned how when I went to see Solo, I was visiting Newfoundland because I wanted it. I'm a big geography geek, and so Newfoundland was the last Canadian province I'd never been to. I've been to all the other ones. 
and I went to go see Solo because it, it came out that weekend and I fell asleep in it. I mean, there were, there were some moments of it that were good, but it was just not a good movie. Otherwise, so they play a couple that work at a hedge fund and he, at the beginning of the movie, is kind of like the up and coming. He's gonna get promoted and she's like the dutiful girlfriend. He proposes, he's confident, all these things. And then she is the one who gets the promotion and things start to unravel in the relationship. And I'll just leave it very vague because since this is coming out and you know, in, in late October and this, this movie just dropped in mid-October, I don't wanna spoil it. But if you guys are into power dynamics and traditional gender norms and so forth, I think this is a fascinating movie to watch because at the beginning of the relationship, it's kind of the standard. The man is the provider, the woman, she's working there, she's bright, but she's due to phone quiet. And then when she gets the promotion, he doesn't know how to handle it. He, he says the right things at the beginning of the movie, but you see this slow kind of inward implosion of him and his self-esteem. He starts seeking out kind of Jordan Peterson-esque uh, incel leaders on YouTube and whatnot. And it's just, it's a slow simmer. She starts respecting him less and she finds out that the boss has only hired him as a favor to his family, that he really doesn't have the talent, even though at the beginning of the movie she loves him and she's saying he needs to be promoted to management as well. But she realizes that he doesn't have what it takes and the management think that she does. Now, when she gets the promotion, one of the things he says is like, you're only getting this because you're a woman, it's affirmative action. And he also throws out, you're only getting you're only getting this because you're, you're putting out, da, da 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 And so she loves him, but the, the dynamic is, is thrown off. He gets inward. The, the sex is really great in the beginning. And the movie is graphic in its sex. The movie, at the beginning, they're having great sex. And then there's a scene in the middle of the movie where he can't perform because he feels so emasculated by her. And he knows on one level he can't really blame her, because, but he can't really blame himself, right? Because that takes a massive epiphany to think that maybe I don't deserve this job and maybe my fiance does. And so by the end of the movie, uh, there's just an explosion of rage uh, toward each other and at each other. And I won't ruin the ending because I think the ending is fascinating, but there's definitely a red pill treatment that needs to be done. Either way, Phoebe, I find you beautiful. You're delicate. You got that delicate, sweet look, the red hair. And yeah, your, your face is maybe not like Kira Knightley, classically beautiful or Natalie Portman. But I find this this woman uh, very attractive and I'm buying stock in her early on because she can do the British period movies and she does a, a very convincing American accent here. And I think she definitely has a future, maybe not like on the level of maybe Julia Garner or Daisy Edgar Jones or Elle Fanning, maybe not that level, but I think she definitely has a career. Guys, post in the comments. Let me know if you've seen Phoebe Denver's work or what you think of her as you see these pictures of her. I'd like to hear from you. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.